Hello, I'm Bird, and welcome to episode three of Rebuilding Saint Etienne. Uh, as always, thanks for joining me. Make sure you smash that like button if you're still enjoying the series and everything I do. Helps me, helps the series, helps everything. Just tickle the thumbs up. It takes two bloody seconds. If you really want to help the channel and become part of my FM21 series, you can always become a patron. There'll be more details on that in a channel update video I did on Saturday morning. Um, before this video, just go and check them out. Uh, and yeah, season three, Saint Etienne. We find an uphill battle there, I think. I think we can make this club great. Can we take on PSG with their finances? I'm not. Well, no, we're never going to get their money. So, you know, you've got to do a bit of wheeling, a bit of dealing. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I love it. I thrive on this kind of save. And I've got a lot of feeling towards this club and everything. It really excites me. So can I do any better in year three? Well, let's find out. So last year was good. We were top of the pile, if you forget about Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, we finished second, last game of the season stuff, as you know, uh, only by a point. But we've got ourselves automatically into the Champions League. So no qualifiers, which is nice. And hopefully we'll unlock some of that Champions League money, which we can use to hopefully build on next year. But yeah, I, I'm going to keep chipping away at this. I've beaten Paris Saint-Germain before with Marseille on FM19. <clears throat> But I think I had more money there. I'm pretty sure I did. We'll see what happens here with St Etienne. Because uh, we are lacking the finances. But it's fun. It's fun. Let's just keep going at it. As long as you guys watch it, I'll keep playing. Oh, I'll talk about a tough group to uh, start your Champions League ever with. My God. Uh, Juventus, Arsenal and trips to Moscow. Awesome. Talking of Champions League, there's something you may or may not know. I have shown a picture of it in episode one. Um, but there's a bit of history with St Etienne and the Champions League. Now, I showed you a picture, I think, when they were playing uh, Liverpool in the Champions League. But they actually did get to a Champions League final once. Uh, but that was against Bayern Munich in 1975-76 when Bayern were triple winners. Look at that, Ajax. Three back-to-back. -back. Uh, and then Bayern won three back-to-back. -back. And then Liverpool won two and Forest won two. But look at that. Look how good England were back there. Two Scousers, two Forest, a Scouser, Villa, Scousers again. That was just English dominance until somebody ruined it for us. I wonder who ruined it for everybody in England. Hey, what happened? I'm not saying anything. Um, so yeah, they've been to a Champions League final at Hampden Park in Glasgow. Beautiful place, beautiful part of the country. Friendlies, I'm still leaving to my assistant. I, don't, I just can't be arsed. I'm, I'm, it's one of my time cost, time cutting things. I can spend ages setting up my bloody friendlies, me. I'm leaving it. First year, we had a million. Last year, they, they only organised like four games. And this year... They've organised a ton of games again. Not as many as the first year, but it's still a lot of games. Um, one of them was against um, our affiliate, Pohang. And then we've played bloody Turkish teams. Benfica, who we beat, which I was quite happy with. Don't even mention this, but we do now own the Stad Jeffers. Uh, 42,000 RC, and it's all ours. We did pay rent to the council, I think. Was it 600 grand? I have to go back and check. Um, so that's, I just prefer owning my own stadium. A club like us who've been in this stadium since 1931 should own it. You should own it, honestly. So yeah, that is positive. I love it. And the facilities are getting upgraded as we speak and they're already good. So when it comes to the infrastructure here at St. NTM, we've done it quite quick. We're nearly maxed out there and then that's that done then. Everything can get pumped in to the playing squad. Staff-wise, nothing's changed. It's still what it was last year. I've not really had to, to do anything with it. I don't see anything, any need to change anything. It's, it's a great advantage. It's our one advantage on Paris um, because we're just the best, aren't we? The best. We're the best around. Nothing's ever going to bring us down. I need to stop singing. Transfer. Now, I've jumped forward to January the 1st because I forgot to save it at certain points. Sometimes I get giddy and play too much. You just get stuck into it, don't you? You know how it is. Um, before I get into this, I just had a swig of me brew. I'm trying to lose weight. I'm, doing, I'm going on a, a bike ride into town. I did one two weeks ago with my mates. We did 14 miles. This one's going to be 18 miles. It's going to kill me. And I'm, um, I'm going off two sugars. It's down to one. And it's been a week now and it's still torturous. You want a coffee. You want to drink that coffee. It looks amazing. Then you put it in your mouth and it's like... <laughs> Apparently, I'll get used to it. I'll have to wait to see. But I didn't do too much here. Um, we've sold a few players, some nobodies. Uh, moved some guys on. Uh, that keeper that I brought in last year, he's out as well. And uh, I've made some cheap-ass signings. Young players. Um, I've also brought in a lot of freebies. 
And I think I've used the loans well and the loans are very exciting. Before we look at the players, this is one player, Stefan Bajic, who's at the club already. Loads of potential. Someone said, why aren't you playing him? Well, I liked him. I saw him in the youth team. I've left him. I'm bedding him in. He will be coming in. He's coming in this season, definitely, to compete. And he has every chance of one day becoming my first team goalkeeper. And other people did mention, why don't you bring in like Perrin to be your coach? Well, he's not very good. But I did. Of course I did. He's been at the club his entire career. I mean... He started his career in 1996, played till 2021 as a player. I, I was willing to give him another deal, me just to keep him in the squad to float. Um, he didn't want to, he, he left and then retired. Um, so it is what it is, and he's now an under 19s coach. Hopefully, he can become decent, but he's here. Back to the transfers, and first up, we've got Mr. Jesus himself. All hail Jesus. Oh, and he's only 24. We've signed him on a free from Real Madrid, and I think he's awesome. Oh, awesome. Another player I quite like um, from Milan on a free, Matteo. Uh, my best friend's nephew is called Matteo. He's not Italian or anything. Um, I've been we're trying to pick a name for my second son. I want to call him, like my real name, don't ever call it me though. I hate it when people message me and call me Dave. My name's Bood. But um, I want to call my second son Dave Jr. The wife won't have it. Um, she's actually part Italian slightly. Um, so I want to give him an Italian name. Like Francesco or something, but she's not having that either. Um, but yeah, Matteo, 31 years old, loads of experience, strengthen that defence even more. Another freebie from Spurs, Carl Walker Peters, who I think is a good, solid, young English fullback. On to the loan signings, and we've loaned Facundo, a young wonder kid from Bayern Munich. They have got some young wonder kids, haven't they, Bayern? A couple of good strikers, obviously, in Arp, Zerk, Z, and now they've got Facundo as well. They're going to be scary in a few years if they uh, develop these players the right way. And he's going to be great for us, hopefully. Seriously. That's the last swig I'm having that brew today. I'm done with that. Anyway, uh, who I'm not done with, though, is Troy Parrott. Now, I never knew much about Troy. When, he, when I first saw his name come up last year, I thought, is he a region? Because he didn't have a face. And then I was like, no, everyone's like, oh, he's a good prospect. And I've seen him. I've done plenty of saves this year and I keep seeing him pop up and become good. So when, he, when I saw him, him available as a striker, I was like, I've got to take him. We've had two good strikers in our first two years that we've loaned who were young, who could become good and are going to become good and have done really well for us. I think this lad's the best. He's an actual wonder kid. Troy is a handsome young fellow who I think will tear up this freaking league. Now, Mr. William, of course, a lot of you have told me how good he is. He's been brilliant in real life uh, on his loan back to St. Etienne and that Arsenal could do with him and he probably will be going back to Arsenal obviously next season. Um, obviously, they loaned him back to us. He didn't play for me that year. Um, although this year, he's a little bit better. We've loaned him again. Why not? I've, lo I've loaned him because he's one of our own and he's French, so he helps with like the quota, doesn't he? So if I can take him, I'm going to take him. Next up, we've loaned Ben Woodburn. I've had him before, I think, on all the rebuilds. Um, I brought him in because I think he's he can play left wing and striker. Now, I brought him in as a left winger because you know I've already got two strikers, but to have him as a striker as well. Just a great, great young player to have in the squad. Now, he looks like a young David Luiz, doesn't he? And he plays for the same team, plays for Arsenal. Um, he's 22 years old and he's French, which I was looking for French players to bring in to help with the squad in Europe. Um, and I was quite surprised that he was available because I think he's a really good player. I know about him. Obviously, I've done an Arsenal rebuild. Um, I think he's doing all right in real life, isn't he? They've got some good young players at Arsenal. That's one thing I noticed when I did that rebuild. And he's freaking brilliant. So, yeah, I think I've done well. So, the squad depth, I think, is great. We've got two good young goalkeepers. I think we've got a good defence. We've got defenders. We've still got Ambrosio from last year. Itter from last year. We've still got that other guy, left back from last year, who's decent. In the middle, we've got solid midfielders. With the new additions, we've still got Yusof, uh, Diusi, Garcia, uh, Milan as well. Uh, Mvilla, Mvilla. Villa. Uh, if you go forward, great wingers. Yusef's a great winger, although I play him in the centre most of the time. Kaz is good. Woodburn's coming. We've got Wagner who can float about. Kennedy. Uh, Zaza's a backup striker. He's a bit of a workhorse. We are better than we were last year. But are we better than Paris Saint Germain? Well, if you look up there, no. Now I've got something absolutely amazing to share with you. Of course, Paris Saint Germain did the double last year. So we got into the Trophée de Champions, which is basically the French Community Shield. And we beat them. First time we beat them. It's amazing. I won a cup. It's just not a proper cup, is it? This is not something I'm putting chalking off on the list as job done. 
it's a great thing it's a great sign that we're improving especially this year with the way we're looking um, Troy Parrott as well kicking his freaking career off banging two goals in Youssef as always producing great player it's the performance as well that was amazing um, and they want a B team Paris Saint-Germain team got Mbappe Akade Neymar Verratti and C C bloody hell I mean just keep rattling off their names it bores you to tears how good they are but it shows you they're beatable this is a team that's hardly been beat over the last couple of years and I'm not saying we're going to be better than them going into the season nah but this is positive because they're at the top of the league and they're still undefeated they undefeated the first year last year someone beat them didn't they did they lose two games last year this year they're undefeated again although this is the positive well look at that who's the two leading goal scorers in the league this year is it Neymar no is it Cardi? no it's Troy Parrott Troy and Parrott um, and Yusuf love it he's awesome Mr Troy never had him before like him a lot a lot of do um, so if you're a Spurs fan develop that kid him and Harry Kane up front ooh dangerous um, so yeah we're second we've only lost one if you remove Paris Saint-Germain's wealth how good would we be how good would we be I mean you saw what I did in the transfer market and this is what I'm up against do you know what I mean I'm trying to save my pennies though, man. Slow game, innit? <sighs> so, of course, these are the finances. Now, we did start the season with about 30 million, um, but we have made a profit this year. Um, and I'm happy with... I'm, I'm happy. Uh, obviously, there's not big money in this league. I'm happy to build teams with loans and freebies, really. That's what I've done this year. So, I'm happy. I think we're, we're doing well. But how well... Well, in the Champions League, not not very, really. We won our first game away in Moscow, and I thought, woohoo! Um, but then we've drawn two. Two against Juventus, it's ain't bad, and lost three. So, it is what it is. But we finished third. And you know what finishing third means? It means you go to the Europa League, and we're going to be in the first round. So, we're starting at the bottom. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, we've drawn Besiktas. One of my teams from the rebuild, like Besiktas. They were brilliant. I love that. I love that time there in Turkey. It was great. I learned a lot about buying and selling players for profit. Hopefully, I can do a bit of that with Saint Etienne, if you know what I mean. Bit of cheeky uh, dealing, wheeler dealing. Um, but there's some good teams in this. And obviously, there's going to be even better teams that bypass this round and go to the second round. But, you know, this is more more our level, really. This is my squad arranged by Vidre. And the guy at the top's a backup left back. He was great that first year, but it has better I think Switzer plays the majority of it even though he doesn't look it now but I think he's a better player that Yusuf I said at the beginning I was going to like him and he just keeps getting better and better and better and let's have a quick look at him if you have a look there he's got some teams after him some good good teams not any like no offence like elite teams but good Premier League teams good La Liga teams he's going nowhere it's this he can play brilliant on the wings and he's solid in the middle he's one of them players you don't know about you've never seen him before you've never heard shit about him you take over a team on a random save and you fall in love with him you think bloody hell i will never forget you zaydu back to the squad and uh, obviously look at him 14 goals beast setting up goals he was awesome that first year he wasn't but he did well last year he's doing well again troy parrot he's slotted in he had pressure on him because it's like every year we're loaning this new young striker and i've not been let down by the last two um how are the last two actually doing well mr app he's now 21 years old and he's got a bit better but he's not playing. He's not playing for Bayern Munich and he's rotting away, which is a massive shame. So I've tried to loan him again and uh, just said no. We want to give him a chance in the first team, which equals one substitute appearance. It's a bit different from last year's superstar, Mr. Raspadori, or Rasputin, as me and the boys called him. Uh, 21 years old. He was a good player, him. I really like him. I've never, I've not seen him. I've heard of Arp. I've never heard of this kid. And I, I think he is a fantastic Fantastic striker, and he, I reckon play him, he could be a top star. Um, Serie A, he's scored 5 in 14, so the, he's playing football. So fair play to them. It's now April, and we're going to start off with our European campaign and see how far we've got. And it started off pretty well at home, beating Bezikas, Beziktas, sorry, 3-0. Mr. Itter himself, Troy Parrot, of course. Mr. Parrot. Uh, actually, I used to work with a guy called Tim Parrot, and his family were French. Um, like his granddad was French and they used to say Parrot or something but obviously now he's English he just calls himself Parrot so I think it is a French name correct me if I'm wrong the away leg in Turkey always going to be 
a battle. They've got a beautiful stadium, by the way. Absolutely lovely location and everything. Uh, I didn't know how nice it was. So I was busy task manager on my rebuild. Rebuild? My journey, man. What am I talking about? Uh, Troy Parrott getting us the uh, equaliser in the 95th minute after they got a winner nearly in the 87th minute. Great game. End to end. But we threw. And guess who we drew? Manchester United. Best team in the world, honestly. Keep coming up against the Marcus Rashford. Can't even score with an open goal, but he scores against me. Done a 1 0 at home. Got to make a trip to the theatre of dreams. Well, to be fair, what a nightmare. Not too bad. We put up a bit of a fight. We played okay. They only just managed to beat us. Marcus Rashford scored again. Hashtag bullshit. Um, got man of the match. I don't rate him, me. Don't tell anyone else because everyone seems to like him, but I don't rate him. I think we should get someone in. Who's a freaking superstar, please? Well, that's just me. That's just my opinion. So we're out of Europe, but we're still doing all right in the league. Um, Paris Saint Germain is still undefeated. Troy Parrott's the number one leading goal scorer. He's up there with Mbappe. Eh? Hey, head to head with Mbappe. Fuck you, Mbappe. They've got the three best players in the league, which is fine. We've only lost two. I mean, when you get to April, we've only lost two games. That's a title winning side, isn't it? We've drawn 10. Uh, and that, and my mate Brian. Legendary sub, good friend now. We've known each other for a good few years, for three years now, crazy. Um, he made a great point, you know, you can do really, really well. Even if I'm doing well against Paris Saint-Germain, which we'll have a look at in a minute, see how I've been doing against them. But it's the games against everyone else. We've got to become the best of the best, really, properly. And uh, not draw so many games, but, you know, we're definitely getting better. After them, we've got the best defence, which is nice. And after them... We've got the best attack, which again is nice, especially since I've spent hardly any money this year. What we do have, though, is loads of potential in this team, and we've got we've had some good little kids come through. Look at this. What is it with France? They make some top top players, Rens, teams like that. I've had I've been at clubs with better staff and better facilities, and I've not had youth intakes like I've had here. I mean, look at that. This this is is getting good. Look at him. He's that first one, Mr. Mohammed, who was a striker. Everyone was like, oh, selling for 15 million. Been developing him. He's becoming a left winger now as well. And that's what he's become a left winger. And look at his ability now. Hashtag first team next year. I'm not selling him. I could have got 15 million at one point. Eventually. They're offering me like 2.5 going up to that. But nah, nah, nah. I'm going to keep him. We're going to keep this, keep developing. And I'm going to give a couple of these kids a chance. If this series goes to like eight episodes, then some of these lads are going to get to be like in the early 20s and be top. If we can keep hold of them, maybe that's my chance to build a good young team. And like, like you know, I'm doing my scouting. And this is intake number three. Uh, it's a month old. I've got a lot of scouting to do with it. But again, I've got three years now. I've got every player that's come into the game on a shortlist in my three years. And you're going to pick up bangings. You're going to find them. And that's the plan. You know, if you guys keep watching, we can get deep into this and maybe... That'll be our way of toppling Paris Saint-Germain. Hopefully, they'll get to a point when they've got all these stars like Neymar at 35, getting too old on contracts they can't get rid of. Oh, they'll just come out of nowhere. Young, hungry and exciting. Fucking kick them right in the balls. Whew. Well, calm down. Um, right then. So, obviously, we don't have a Coupe de Ligue anymore. We've only got the Coupe de France. And this is our one chance of maybe getting a bit of silverware early doors. Uh, and we started off in the ninth round playing those dudes winning 2-1. Next up was Lens Lens uh, beating them 2-0. Facundo getting both uh, goals. Then it was on to the 11th round. Imagine being a team that's the start of round one. Jesus Christ. Uh, no wonder they got rid of the Coupe de Ligue. Um, so yeah, we played Quivilli Ru Ruen. Quivilli Ruen. Quivilli Ruen. And we beat them 1-0. And when it's Strasbourg who actually beat Paris last year. Well done to them. Can't beat me though, can you? Hey, can't beat me in the Coupe de France. Can't beat me in the Coupe de France. Look at that freaking performance. FM'd him a little bit. 2 0, lovely, jubbly. Can't beat Paris in the Coupe de France. We can't beat Paris in the Coupe de Bloody France. 2 0. Uh, they bossed us, didn't they? And bloody Bappe, I hate him. In the league though, first time we played him, away, we give him a game. It's to Troy Parrot with an 87th minute. Fucking get in there! Try screaming me tits off at a computer game. That's what it's like, though, isn't it? Yusuf played well in this game as well. What a game! And then on TV, we did it again. So you know, this is progress. They were battering us that first year. We got a bit off them last year, bit by bit by bit. 
We can put up a fight with him with a team of freaking freebies and loans. We are losing money though. We're losing it. That is a big worry. But hopefully we can make some this year. Because we are signing some. Uh, we've got some young players on pre-contract stealing. Because you can. There's a loophole here and there for that. I don't care. The good young players. We'll see if I can develop them. Um, I'm also bringing in players. A few from Man City and so on. Uh, Eric Garcia. We've got Mr. Char Chaloba. Trev. Who's decent. I mean some of these guys will come in and become players for me. So I might just sell them. Why not? Will Volks. We'll be getting sold on. I'll make some money off him, definitely. Uh, Luca Illich, probably stay. So you know what I mean? It's, I've got to do it. You've got to, I'm, I'm going to use what's within the game to make me better. Because I'm up against a freaking juggernaut in Paris Saint-Germain. Obviously, we're out of Europe. We're out of the cup. Um, and we've just... I just want to get a second. If we can just keep being second, 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 that's the best we can be. And then hopefully one day just sneak in. Sneak in like a lesser city. Do you know what I mean? And pinch one. But to get second this year, or to at least solidify it, we've got, you know, a toughish running some very, 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 very good teams. So let's find out what happens. Let's share a couple of those running games together and share some of the goals. And one of the good victories was away at Rennes. Now they are a team that just produces top youth. They do, don't they? I don't know if you ever noticed that, but a lot of France's good wonder kids come from there. Every year they seem to have a couple. And one of them teams, if they actually kept the players... If you ever bored, have a save with them. Try and keep your youth. You'll be a beast with them, trust me. Um, but we were beastly with them. We absolutely outplayed them completely. And the last game I'm going to show you is the second to last game in the season. Not because it's against a great team or it's a great, massively important game. Just because there's lots of goals to share with you. Uh, and two for Mr. Parrot himself. But an absolute beast for me this year, uh, Parrot. And I'm going to try. Everyone I've got on loan this year I think is awesome. I'm going to try and reloan. Why not if I can? They've been good. Sometimes you can get them again, can't you? We've done that in the past. Um, but I can't not loan players. I think that's the kind of club we're going to be for a good few years yet. And of course, we finished second and Paris Saint-Germain also had another invincible season. That's two invincible seasons they've had in the three seasons we've played. They've also now taken us over. Um, we were the most successful team with 10 titles. They have now won their 11th, so they're now the most successful team in the league. And a one title... In front of us. No, it's not about trying to compete with that. Just one title will do me. You might notice they didn't got a European Cup there either because they didn't get to the final again. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Barcelona did. They got beat off Chelsea. Chelsea got their hands on the second Champions League trophy, which is nice for the Blues. Paris did do the double, though. They um, beat Rennes. Rennes beat them in the final, didn't they, the other year? Was it in the Coupe de Ligue? The last Coupe de Ligue, I think. Um, so Paris did the double, domestic double. And this is the final look at my squad, and what a squad. I've really enjoyed these lads this year. They've been some really good players doing a really good job, but, um, you know, really good. we're going to have to make some tough decisions. A couple of guys have come to the end. Miguel, the backup left back, as good as he's done, even as a backup left back. I think it may be time for him to go a few, really. Age wise, I want to refresh things. I've got not just young players I want, I've got a lot of players out there. If we can do the deals, I'm going to get them. And um, got a busy summer, really. We've got to maintain second, but try and get better and better and better. Keep getting catching Paris Saint-Germain up, because they're just going to be consistent, aren't they? They're either not going to get beat or they're going to lose one or two games. So, so that's it. That is the end of episode three. Thank you very much for watching. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Go and check out all my other content. If you do want to become part of my FM20 main Let's Play series, go and check out my channel update video. And you have to become a patron. A bit more detail in that video. Um, but yeah, thank you for your support anyway. The view just sitting here with me. For 20 odd minutes i do appreciate it i hope you're happy i hope you're well and i hope you're going to come back for episode four stay safe people i'm booed see you next time